For as long as I can remember, I've loved Valentine's Day. Every heart-shaped foil balloon, every silly candy gram incarnation with unmistakably genuine statements like, be mine, I love you more, cutie pie, I'm stuck on you. It's all bullshit. <laughs> and I love it. I remember being in Clary Middle School with my hair in a ponytail and my half moon bang crafted with gel and water and my super long obligatory acrylic nails and my pigeon toed strut. My wardrobe entirely dedicated to solids like navy blue and khaki. I remember Valentine's Day playing out in my school like a grand Broadway production. It was all so stunning. I watched the popular girls get balloons, flowers, and teddy bears. The balloons were Macy's Day Parade-esque Mylar balloons in characters any girl would love. Tweety Bird, Pooh Bear, Minnie Mouse, or Hello Kitty. And the most noteworthy of all, mythical as unicorns, the teddy bear-filled balloon. <sighs> when I say they got flowers, I don't mean the funky, discolored carnations provided by the yearbook club. I mean sweet-smelling steroid roses with carefully assembled baby's breath. And the teddy bears? We're talking state fair quality, if not better. Soft, huge monsters that you could barely carry down the hallway. Managing the flowers, bears, textbooks, and balloons was a balancing act I longed to attempt. Alas, no one in school ever bought me balloons or teddy bears. I was popular only among the two librarians. <laughs> Socially relegated as the big boob girl who used big words and preferred noisy shoes over a pair of Michael Jordan Air Force Ones. It was 2009, my favorite ex and I finally decided to stop seeing each other for good. She was Polly and still in love with someone else. I was monogamous and wanted different things for myself. In all the ways we made sense, there were a million other ways we didn't. As hard as we tried to straddle both worlds, we just kept crashing. She was one of the few people who had ever given me a truly beautiful Valentine's Day, even if it was bittersweet. She made me feel like a popular girl and an incredible fool all in one false swoop. We exchanged Valentine's Day gifts as an homage to ourselves, to our tumultuous love, problematic and beautiful. We did this on the same day as our carefully planned breakup. Our love died like massive stars. We burned brighter than most and our ending was so dramatic. She was the ex who broke me in a million tiny pieces. We can never put what we had back together again. I went out in search of someone who could love me that way, but treat me better. I was single, had my own apartment, and the world of women was open to me. <laughs> I was ready to find someone who would make me a popular girl in her life. And more than teddy bears or flowers, I wanted to feel like someone's spectacular Broadway production without feeling the need to exit stage left. So naturally, I got on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> with the hopes of finding someone kind, silly, family-oriented, and motivated. I described myself in my post as a fierce femme, sweet as a bowl of sugar, and busy as hell. And I also said I'd love to cuddle. A woman named Jasmine responded. She loved the movie A Christmas Story, leather, and chocolate truffles. <laughs> She wasn't my first response, but she was definitely my favorite. She responded within two days, setting herself apart from all the other Craigslist weirdos. I had her phone number. This was dating 101 success. The first call is always the scariest. What's her voice gonna sound like? I hope I sound cool and smart. I called her phone feeling two parts nervous and two parts excited. The voice on the other end was as light as mine. Hello. This is Jasmine. Is this Aries? I could hear her smiling through the receiver. She told me I had a nice voice. Score! 
I told her I wanted to meet up sometime. She politely asked if we could pick up her laundry on the way to our first date. <laughs> I told her I didn't have a car either, but we could meet up at the Rockbridge BART station. I met her in January at the BART station when the leaves were especially shiny and everything in the air felt new. I walked to the BART station with hope and a little hint of precaution. I waited patiently, and when she stepped out on the platform, I knew it was her. Short brown butch with almond eyes, a fade, and a nice smile. <laughs> Something about her threw me off and made me question whether this was a good thing or another dumb choice I had made. The nice toothy smile quickly faded into a scowl, and I told her we'd be walking to my house just about 10 minutes up the street and around the corner. <laughs> she told me she was a mix between a hippie and a thug, which never made sense to me. <laughs> Jasmine was going to school for computers <laughs> and enjoyed photography. I don't remember what we ate the first time. I just know from then on she was always at my apartment. I'd leave first thing in the morning by 7.30 for work in downtown Oakland, taking the number 42 bus. She liked watching me put my outfits together. She liked watching the curls compose themselves in my hair. So she was always up watching me and kissing me goodbye and good morning, baby, and how are you, baby? Suddenly, I was living with a child who was older than me. I was 25 and she was 32. She smoked cigarettes and left her full ashtray all over my polite dining room table. She just watched me. I made dinner, I washed dishes, and she watched me until we fell asleep. <laughs> this misguided dance banged on in repetition for at least a month. Nevertheless, things continued. She had pulled exactly one disappearing act on me. For two days, she was unreachable. She claimed it was something about helping her mother. I, I didn't think much about it. I, I knew a few key things about her. Yeah. One, in order for her to orgasm, I had to choke the shit out of her while fingering her, which is fine. I mean, you know, whatever gets you there, you know? And, you know, honestly, my orgasms were definitely more on the vanilla end of the spectrum. <laughs> we had been seriously dating now for at least three months, and it was nearly my heyday, February 14th. In my previous relationships, I had been good at having Valentine's Day expectations and not so good at the communicating part of it. This year, I had communicated exactly what I wanted, and I knew what I was going to get for her. For Valentine's Day, I bought Jasmine the famed Christmas Story leg lamp, fragile in all its glowing electric sexual glory, and a box of chocolate truffles covered in a heart-shaped leather jacket. And naturally, my smooth brown body sprawled out on the couch in a black and mesh Frederick Peekaboo illusion gown see-through in all the right places. <laughs> I wrapped the leg lamp in red and pink heart-covered paper, the truffles on the table, and an unkind loneliness dancing in the air around me. I waited and waited and waited and called and waited. My leather-loving sweetie was nowhere to be found. Jasmine finally showed up to my house two days later with a soft brown monster teddy bear, an empty apology, and a claim her phone was lost and conveniently couldn't remember my phone number to call me. <laughs> An excuse only my 25-year-old self would have settled for. Suddenly, I felt less like Cupid and more like Ralphie from A Christmas Story. I wanted to be someone's popular girl, to feel special, to feel like someone needed to pay that much attention to me. And when I really thought about it, there were plenty of small alarms warning me that I'd shoot my eye out. This woman was a Red Ryder carbine action 200 shot range model air rifle gun. And like Ralphie, I was left in the cold with tears all over my face. Our short-lived courtship of three to four months, over our courtship of three to four months, she was consistently jealous and accusing me of sleeping with someone else. Go fucking figure. I had lost the time and energy to argue with her. And once or twice when she actually yelled at me, that was the fucking last straw. <laughs> I had broken up with her by early April and never looked back. 
Weeks later, I couldn't stand seeing the soft monster teddy bear in my bed. One Saturday morning, I smothered the bitch <laughs> into a large black garbage bag, along with other bullshit memorabilia I couldn't tolerate keeping in my house. I strutted into the children's hospital next door and dropped the items off at the front desk. The receptionist pulled out all the items as if she knew these were heartbreak leftovers. Examining the teddy bear especially and looking at me. The receptionist asked me if I needed a receipt. I never needed more reminders that my leather lover was a waste of my time and some really good fucking gifts. To this day, I've lost a lot of hope in my favorite holiday, and naturally Craigslist. <laughs> Every year, right around the end of January, I catch myself walking through the grocery store to buy bread or pick up lipstick, and suddenly I become entranced. Droves of chocolate brown and candy apple red teddy bears, each with their own personality, some with bow ties and glasses or little capes only to be outdone by the legion of heart-shaped chocolate boxes embedded with lace and red wrapping paper. Billowing red and silver mylar balloons overpower the air with music and sweet images marking their presence. Strategically placed, big-butted, long-stemmed red roses dipped in raspberry, fuchsia, and lavender hues with just a hint of baby's breath. Two or three dedicated aisles of Valentine's Day cards with words I've been dying to hear my whole damn life. And I just sigh a little. Thank you. <laughs>